One country has recently staked its claim to having the best fans in the world. Welcome to Morocco, a country which is simply football mad. A melting pot of cultures has forged one of the game's most incredible fan scenes. In a land on the border of Europe, where Africa meets the Arab world, football is inseparable from society. I think it's a part of culture, so uh, everyone plays football in Morocco, uh, every uh, child. Home to one of the world's fiercest football derbies, and some of the best TIFOs in the ultras scene. It's like a battle uh, when Raja faces with that. And Morocco's not just a shining beacon for men's football, it's also setting the standard for the women's game in the Arab world. These fans won hearts and minds at the 2022 World Cup and Morocco isn't finished just yet, either on or off the pitch. So how has Morocco's passion for football helped turn them into a powerhouse? Tangier, known as the gateway between Africa and Europe and the scene of Morocco's recent 2-1 victory over Brazil. Following Morocco's incredible success at the 2022 World Cup, enthusiasm for football is at an all-time high. And the on-pitch success is largely thanks to one man, Wale Dregregi. He uh, created uh, the good atmosphere and a good ambiance for, for the team and also he tried to bring the good thing and the best thing from every player. Regregi, born in France, united a previously fractured Morocco national team. A squad and fan base that had struggled with its identity embraced its multicultural makeup. There are players who speak Darija, Moroccan Arabic, those who speak a northern Berber dialect, and those who use a southern dialect. And 14 of the 26 players at the World Cup were born in Europe to Moroccan parents. They were born in France and Italy and Spain and Netherlands also, but they are Moroccan. They are 100% Moroccan guys. They bring with them uh, this kind of melting pot identity. At the center of the squad, however, there are common themes, pride for Morocco and shared cultural values. Family, uh, respect and also uh, work. These three values, I guess, are the most shown. Africans, Arabs and Muslims can see themselves in this team. And the fans stole the show at the Qatar World Cup, winning the neutral hearts of millions with their chanting, drumming and passion. The Moroccan makeup has also created a highly talented pool of footballers. Yet until recently, they weren't living up to their potential. The team's trajectory truly changed in 2009, when the Moroccan Football Federation overhauled the game's structures. Under President Fozzi Lecture, investment in infrastructure and youth development increased, including the $70 million Mohammed VI football complex. These conditions allowed Regregi to shine. He kept Morocco's highly organised defensive structures, but introduced freedom of expression in attack to bombard the opposition. And following the Atlas Lions' success in Qatar, there's great optimism that they can become a true powerhouse. But before the men's side plots its next steps to climb the world order, there's another team intent on burgeoning Morocco's reputation. Morocco's capital, Rabat. 
More than 50,000 fans packed out the Prince Moulay Abdullah Stadium for the 2022 Africa Cup of Nations final. It was a record for a women's football match in Africa. While Morocco lost the final against South Africa, it represented a massive shift for women's football, according to captain Hislan Shabak. Shebek was the star and top goal scorer of the WAFCON, where Morocco upset heavyweights Nigeria in the semi-finals. Next up is a debut at the 2023 World Cup, where Morocco will be the first Arab nation to play in the tournament. Under Renald Pedros, a two-time Champions League winning coach with Lyon, training standards, tactics and above all confidence have lifted. Again, progress is thanks to the Moroccan FA and a four-year plan introduced in 2020. They professionalised the top two divisions, provided set wages for players and staff at every club and bolstered grassroots funding. Shebek's club Farabat are clear heavyweights. Funded by their men's team, they poach the best players and have won 10 of the past 11 league titles. Far's spending may have distorted the competition, but the club has set the standard and their investment has benefited the national team. Like most countries in the world, women's football in Morocco is facing many challenges to be accepted within society, but that's starting to change. I think the society is they are more tolerant about uh, about girls who play soccer. But 10 years ago, things were not the same. Shebek is one of the fortunate ones in her generation. Her father, Labi Shebek, was a Moroccan international and encouraged her dreams to turn professional. Others weren't so fortunate. Those views are still a challenge in conservative towns like Khwazan. Fadwa Shanan faced obstacles during her playing and coaching career, but she's seen a massive improvement since founding Emal Khwazan in the late 1990s. Now there's a lot more freedom and opportunities in Khwazan with the club playing in the professional second division. The 2023 World Cup is seen as the next opportunity to cement women's football further into Moroccan society. And while Morocco, like the men's team, still rely on foreign-born talent, the professionalisation of the domestic leagues will build the bedrock for future generations. <laughs> Based on the large crowds that cheered on Morocco in the Africa Cup of Nations, support will also be solid as they tackle the best in the world. او كنشوف واحد الحب كبير من من طرف الجمهور وهذا كيسعدنا اكيد وكيعطينا كي كنقول لك واحد لا موتيفاسيون باش نزيدوا اللي ما كيراهن عليه حتى شي واحد في الاول من بعد كيفاجئ الجميع Of course Moroccan football's success men's and women's wouldn't be anywhere without the nation's fierce passion for football and a unique fan scene 
and you can find the heart of that culture beating in one city, Casablanca. It's the first week of Ramadan and fans are rushing to Mohammed V Stadium in order to break fast. This is just how intertwined football is with Moroccan culture and society. I think that Morocco is also a fan of football because it's a tradition, a culture. Morocco is a fan of football from the beginning. We're a fan of our families. We're a fan of the family. We're a fan of the family from the beginning. Moroccan football can't be explained without Widad or without Raja. They dominate the scene in Casablanca. Widad is historically linked to the Moroccan monarch since its founding in 1937. Raja arrived about a decade later as a working class club. They both share the Mohammed V Stadium, Widad take up the Curva Nord, and Raja occupy the Curva Sud. They're both heavily responsible for Morocco's rising reputation as a hotbed for fan culture. There is, il n'y a pas de comparaison entre le Wida et le Raja. Le Wak est vraiment très très haut. Le Raja, c'est une équipe de, du quartier. The ultra scene in Morocco grew out of these two clubs, with the Green Boys of Raja founded in 2005 and the winners of Widad forming just a few months later. Further ultras groups around the nation have popped up since, and during the 2010 Arab Spring, they started using the stadiums to voice dissent. Every group ultras was singing uh, a political and social demand. It was like a sort of competition, form of competition between them. And everyone tried to um, like uh, take position. We are um, a political group. We are. We sing uh, songs about politics, about culture, about social uh, situation here in Morocco, about struggles all the time. Chance against corruption, meager work opportunities, and poverty were quickly formed. Despite its shiny exterior, dazzling tourists from across the globe, everyday Moroccans are struggling with inflation, unemployment, and rising gas and food prices. Stadiums are viewed as sanctuaries where disenchanted fans can speak out. Stadiums for them is a space of freedom, a space of expression, and they use it so uh, they use it as as they want. So uh, everything is uh, permitted in the stadiums, but outside the stadiums, no, you cannot really talk about many things. And through their elaborate songs and intricate tifos. Moroccan fans truly rival any other ultra scene found across the world. They try to compare, compare themselves with the, the guys from South America, from Argentina. The first group ultras in the world were there in South America, not in Europe. But above all else, Moroccan football mostly mirrors Moroccan values. It's about love, family and respect. They think mostly about love, love of the country, love of the the, the the family love of uh, the club. Jamaal Farak Raja Raja Al Bidawi kit nafs rasha kit nafs dead diela. Kull imtihan kum pahulu nqadmu had idafa. Jamaal di al widat usertul al fasti al winners. Tay tay rasmu la wahed jamila. Tay tay diru tay kuat kubar. Di ma tay amru li stad. Fi mamshat al farqat imshi u maa. It's within these stadiums too, from where the support for the women's game is emanating. While ultras groups are still very much male-dominated, an almost universal issue, football is simply football for a lot of fans. C'est une chose incroyable que les femmes soient aussi reconnues dans le monde du football, surtout dans un pays arabe où la place de la femme a souvent été critiquée. Et je vois une évolution dans mon pays et je suis très fière de de ce que mon pays est devenu. <laughs> With fanatic support backing them, the Moroccan national teams have made their fans proud, showcasing the country's multicultural society to the world.
We are Muslims who are Arabic, we're African too. So that means that we are in the mix. When I see them, I see that this is the Moroccan of the future. Moroccans of the future are like this. They speak not only Darija or Moroccan, they speak German, they speak Spanish, they speak Berber. The men's unexpected success has shown that they can match the best in the world and also encourage dreams of further glory. No one expected that Morocco reached this semi-final, but uh, it was great to uh, show the world that if we work, if we surround ourselves with the, the good people, maybe we could do something together. And the next step for men's football, Morocco is hoping to host the AFCON in 2025 and the Holy Grail, the 2030 World Cup. الحمد لله عندنا دابا عندنا واحد لاستغيكتور اللي كبيرة بزاف عندنا دي 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 ستاج اللي كبارين تنحلموا اننا ننظموا كاس العالم وان شاء الله الى تلعب المونديال في المغرب فالكاس العالم غادي يكون مغربي بالفضل ديال هاد هاد اللاعبين اللي 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 كنشكرهم بزاف وكذلك الفضل اللي كيرجع لهاد الجمهور هذا for the women, the World Cup debut in Australia and New Zealand should bring even more visibility, funding and support to their cause. I hope that the next time will come to us in a different way. But, alhamdulillah, we have a new change. We can see that the Kurds will say the word of the Maghrib and the word of the Maghrib. They are certainly leading the way forward for Arab nations, which have a reputation for conservatism when it comes to women's rights and equality. Morocco, it's not the same. So Morocco is not Saudi Arabia. It's not, it's not like Kuwait or Emirates or Qatar. You know, things are evolving now. And there's no reason to doubt that the women can't mimic the men and climb their way up the world order. غير يخدموا ويجتهدوا وان شاء الله الطريق راه راه غدا وكتقاد وكنتمنى ان شاء الله نشوفوا حتى حنا جيل اخر اللي يعيشنا بزاف ديال الفرحات وحتى حنايا واحد النهار ناخذوا كاس العالم وناخذوا كاس افريقيا لما لا Through Morocco's passion for football, fervent investment and its cultural values that may not be so pie in the sky. So after a few weeks in Morocco, what can I say? It can be noisy, it can be chaotic. But the people, the hospitality, the culture, the passion, it's just next level. It's hands down one of the best fan scenes I've ever experienced in my life. If you love football, get yourself to Morocco.